Hi guys, today I'll try to finally finish repair of this D-Link switch. Um, this is uh, a thing called DG, the, the switch called DGS uh, 10 or 5D. Uh, I, have cre I have uploaded previous video when I um, disassemble it and figured out that's the problem. The problem of, um, uh, of this switch is uh, the swell capacitors. So they're not really obviously um, swell, but if you look at them, they are kind of slightly bulged. So I'll it unsolder everything. Um, I did I had another attempt, video attempt to uh, unsolder those capacitors during my review of this uh, PCB clamp, which I'm using right now to help me. But the soldering uh, unsoldering iron I used didn't have enough thermal capacity to actually uh, unsolder and uh, sucking the solder from the ground plane uh, of this uh, PCB. So I had to use uh, regular soldering iron and just um, you know unsolder one lead and wiggle it like this, unsolder another lead, wiggle it like this, and like in few attempts I was able to pull the capacitor. So I did all eight of them and it was fairly boring procedure. And so I do have unsoldered all, all eight capacitors. Uh, the um, vias are all cleaned up so uh, I'll, I'm ready to actually put uh, new capacitors in and to see if it works or not. So these are United Chemicon capacitors they are rated 1 of 100, 105 degrees so they probably will shoot, they should last longer and they are rated I think 7000 hours or something like that they, are, they were 40 cents a pop. So all of them are, uh, almost all of them, 220 microfarads, 25 volt, and only one is um, 1000 microfarads, 6.3 volt. So, uh, the funny enough, this one looks a little bit different than original, but the original capacitors were branded TIPO, and, and they don't well, they still say 1 of 5 Celsius, but they all failed. Except this 1000 microfarad, but I unsoldered it just, you know, like a precautionary measure. Alright, so um, I'm gonna put all capacitors in and solder them one by one. I do remember that this one is um, 1000 microfarad supposed to go here. Everything else is 220 microfarad. Obviously have to ob uh, observe polarity to make sure I put them properly. So this white thing is me means negative. So they all go the same way. The shorter lead of the capacitors uh, is negative, usually. One more is missing. All right. All eight of them. I'm going to spread the capacitor's legs a little bit to make sure they are not falling. Not falling out.
All right. I soldered all capacitors, cut off the leads, and it will be nice to actually examine the PCB through the magnifying glass to make sure that there is no any shorts of any kind before after we solder. After we solder before we actually power this thing on. I already did that and it looks pretty good. So Let's try to power it up. All right, here's the moment of truth. There is this um, seven and a half volt weird power supply. Um, well, let's see if you're gonna have any sparks or smoke or anything like that. Oh my God, I think it is working. It's blinking some not random stuff doing something predictable okay okay uh, here's the power ca uh, network cable sorry <laughs> and let's see what happened if I plug it in gosh oh my god it's working well that's good news well I spent about five bucks on capacitors because I bought them a little bit um, uh, like 10 of each just in case and it's good always good to have capacitors around and um, yeah and it's working I didn't really spend much money on anything else except the capacitors obviously those uh, green capacitors are going straight to the garbage and I think we have a winner so, if you have some weird ass problem with your uh, switch, and it's, you know, a fairly uh, good switch, like one gigabit, like this D-Link, uh, you can just, you know, open it up, take a look, maybe, you know, one or two or all capacitors are bonkers, and you just replace them for five dollars, and you're gonna have new switch. So, thank you for watching, guys. Um, uh, please like video if you like it comment, subscribe. See you next time.